disclaimer before you watch this video. This video does not focus on the chemical mechanics of argon dating, but it instead pulls back the curtain on the A to Z steps from finding a potential sample to date, processing it, and producing a potential age from the processed sample. You are surveying the remote badlands in southwest Ethiopia, whose location is believed to be the material source of obsidian stone tools used by late Pleistocene hunter-gatherers at a nearby archaeological site. As you wander down deeper into this caldera, you can make out the layer cakes of stratigraphic beds, some of which are volcanic ash or lahars. You see beds of volcanic ash interbedding stone tools. You don't know how old they are, or who made them. But you realize the volcanic beds may be able to provide a relative age constraint for these artifacts. You know that the site has never been dated to find its age, but you do know its age is likely sometime in the Pleistocene and Holocene because of past volcanic activity of the area, which has been well documented. This means these beds are possibly amendable to argon dating, which can date anywhere from as young as 1,000 years ago to 4.56 billion years ago. But generally, the older the material, the better for argon dating. Once returned from the field, how can you find an age from this lump of rock? This video delves into the extensive preparation done to prepare a sample for dating. Argon argon dating. How does it work? In the simplest of terms, argon argon dating finds the age of a material by measuring the radioactive decay of argon isotopes in the sample. By measuring the ratio of argon 40 and argon 39, or the daughter and parent isotope, we can determine an approximate age for the material. But first, several steps must be performed to make the sample ready for dating. These steps include crushing, cleaning, sieving, magnetic separation, heavy liquid separation, picking, and loading. For a bit about me, I work at the University of Florida as a geology lab assistant, where I do sample preparation for geochronology and geochemistry analyses. In this video, I will show you how to prep a sample for argon argon dating by showing how to extract alkaline fields from minerals like serenidine from a volcanic sample. Now, there are many different methods and minerals one can use for this, but this is how I do here at UF. The first step is crushing the sample using a hammer rock crusher. In the rock crusher, the rock chunks turn into rock fragments. And after the crusher, I put the sample in the mill to turn the rock into a ground powder. The next step is to clean the sample. More often times than not, the sample may be dirty, clay rich from outside minerals or elements. If cleaning is necessary, I use a bucket and donut shaped basin sitting atop the bucket to separate the heavier sediment from the lighter clay, which will float to the top of the basin and wash away. Once it's dry, the next step is sieving to the correct particle size that we want to date. Note the different mesh sizes used here. For my sample, the best range is between 50 to 80 microns, but smaller particle sizes up to 100 to 120 microns can be used too. So after sieving is magnetic separation. Cinnidine is a non-magnetic mineral. By removing the particles that are magnetic, we can remove a significant bulk of the material to make the collecting of cinnidine easier later on. And after that is heavy liquid separation. It's sometimes used to help separate minerals by their density if there is too much of a type of mineral that we don't want. This could be too much quartz or too much plagioclase. It's always important to check the density of the heavy liquid prior to use. And heavy liquid separation is not always necessary, but it can be super helpful. And now it's time for picking. We want to pick the cleanest looking sanidines that have no intrusions or stainings. Generally, the more we pick, the better. The younger the materials, the more grains you need since there is less available decayed argon to measure in younger samples. Older samples require less material as the ratio between isotopes is much greater. The final step of this physical preparation is loading the samples into the larger holes on this disc. These discs are labeled so that we can keep track of which samples which. Some discs may only have 5 holes, but some can have as many as 100. Keeping track of which sample is very important. The smaller holes are filled with a standard which is used to help date the sample. In order for argon argon to measure argon 39 and argon 40, the sample must be irradiated so that the potassium 39 isotope turns into argon 39 by a fast neutron reaction. Several factors determine the amount of argon 39 produced. Using a standard of a known age helps to fill in some of the varying parameters and better define them by determining the flux monitor and the flux parameter of the sample. Usually when radiation occurs, argon 40 isn't the only daughter isotope. Other isotopes of calcium, argon, potassium, and even chloride form as well. This is often mitigated by including other materials or determining the known rate of these other isotopes during irradiation to better help define the potassium 39 argon 39 ratio by defining other existing parameters. And once the parameters of J have been defined post irradiation, the age can be determined through mass spectrometry. 
Once we get the data back, we can process it and produce an approximate age. This age can help us find the approximate age range of the stone tools that were sandwiched between these ashes that we collected. This means that we can estimate a date when early hunter-gatherers produced and deposited these tools. This date ultimately provides a deeper insight into the early humans who used a unique corner in Africa along the edge of the East African Rift.